Hey, Bjorn Strandia, I'm here. Welcome back to Disco Elysium, where we are examining the boardwalk, and I am really hoping, was really hoping anyway, that we would find something uh, about, this was one of the three locations that we think the shots might have come from that killed our, our suspect. So I was, uh, I guess maybe I can go this way. There's this up here, maybe get to the top of this building. That might be a good spot. Bars cover these long, dusty windows. It's that down there. There's a slit in the concrete here, a sewer. The light vanishes inside the concrete slit. A structure goes deep under the earth. Yell ho into the slit. There's no echo and no answer. What's in there? Maybe it's a storm day for the sewer? Kim, any idea what's down there? No idea. There's a glass out to polish. Could be connected to one of the buildings around here. Think you might find Ruby down there. We might find her down somewhere. There's an old storm drain system beneath Martinez that's mostly collapsed. Revishal's sewage system has been built and rebuilt four or five times now. He puts his glasses back on. In conclusion, she could be under any building, but not in there. He looks in his sudden size. I hope not. Can I, I can't do anything with it at this point after, after having thought about it for a bit. Um, what's this? You see a once bright mural towering above you. The signage has peeled off over the years. We can still make out Feld Electrical R&D. A slogan used to intertwine with the loops uh, a long time ago. Now only a shadow of peel leathers, letters remain. It says tomorrow is just a whisper away. Tomorrow is just a whisper away. Although like tomorrow never came, raised the collar of his bomber jacket. And we turn away. What's this? Other power box, it charges nothing now, it's empty. Little money. I think, I wonder if I can get in there. The fence blocks the path, no way on from here. I haven't been back there. Let's, uh, oh wow, that's that's good money. And some more nose of fed. All right, I wanna get back there. Maybe if I go around the long way, Kim is probably gonna wanna vanish here soon. The remaining windows rattle from a strong gust of wind. They're covered in a thick layer of grime. They must have been like this for 40 years. Try to see inside. Dripping water falls from a high place. All you can see is a shadow of a collapsing staircase. There's rust and corrosion in the bars. They're foaming with it, and a small layer of white salt from the sea. Lieutenant, can you make out what's inside? No, he shakes his head. The windows rattle in their frames. I won't even try, you know. Takes his glasses off. I had a partner once. They called him eyes because he had to show me things. It's that bad. You can still shoot, though. Well enough, actually. It's odd how that works. I'm no sharpshooter, but I pass my shooting courses 7 out of 10. All right. That's, uh, all right. Still can't really get in there at all. So, wait. Oh, I can go down this way. I see. And now, can I come down and around like this? It does seem so. There's more stuff. Oh, are these our missing people? There's two of them. Well, let's see. Tiny cages carefully constructed. Change. I'm gonna... These heavy military blockades are riddled with bullet holes crumbling. Could this be the buoy class Classier told you about? A metal and plastic contraption bobs up and down amidst the trembling reeds. At first it looks like trash, but closer. That over there, he points to the strange looking object, must be the buoy Classier told us about. Once you hit her passport, I'm take a look. Yeah, pick it up. You lift the buoy out of the water without much effort. It's not tied or, or tied or to anything. It has a typo. Anyway, the cords dangling from the bottom appear to have been cut. Examine the plastic ball. The number 11 has been written on the yellow plastic. It hasn't been in the water for very long, but it's already discolored and slimy with silt. A latch holds it closed, but has only just barely. The brittle of metal of the latch has cracked. Civil construction, very uh, un unsafe. Shake it. There's something in there splashing around. Sniff it. It smells like you would expect it to smell. A concentrated version of the coast. Salt, industrial slop, and decay. Open it. A shot glass worth of seawater pours out. Some algae. And nothing else. Well, damn. No documents. Who you think took them? I have no idea. Lieutenant taps his foot, frowning. Um... Is this a disaster or a minor quirk? It feels like I shouldn't be ruling either way. I'm going to say it's a disaster. I wouldn't go so far as to say it's that. 
this is only a small loose end. But I do wish we knew we took the documents. Um, it must have been Clausier's enemies, which means she's in danger. Could be. We should keep an eye out, he sighs. Nothing more for us to do here. Let's go. You can ask the miss what she thinks later if you have the time, but you'll doubt she'll tell you much at this point. Um, we're lucky it's still here. A little longer it would have floated away. But then it flashes a mirthless half smile. We still we still got her too late. Nothing you've used here anymore. So we're gonna leave it alone. All right. Uh, um, these slog soggy logs smell of ignition fluid. Still, they won't light up. It's almost impossible to get a fire going this close to the ocean. All right. Hello, I'm Gary. How do you do, officer? I do well, and you, I think, are someone we are looking for. Yellow man. I, I mean, officer. Okay, you just went way down in my estimation. Lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly and takes out his notebook. Yellow man? Interesting. There's something to ask him about after the probing first. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. Not a lover of the great outdoors? I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. Nobody's perfect. I'm sure you've been tempted to drink. Oh, I've been tempted. But someone has to stay strong for Rivercall. He nods gravely. His gaze shifts to the pile of soggy logs at his feet. So he's not the guy we're looking for. It's Mor Morel, who I guess is the one down there. He pronounces Revachal with a hard K, like Revacall, unlike other people, except me when I didn't know any better. You said Revacall? I like to pronounce it the hard way, the old way, the vespertine way, he nods solemnly. I'm guessing he's like total fascist. Oh, yeah, it's right there. The crypto fascist. Wait, did it start saying? Oh, I thought it said something like crypto biologist, but it just says crypto fascist. Okay. He winks at you, trying to relay some hidden messages, inviting you to pronounce it too, perhaps? It's odd. It's a secret right, a very fringe nationalist handshake, probably. Is this your mug? My, my mug? Why would you think that? You said yellow man. That's not something many people go around saying. Really? I hear all the time. All in jest, of course. No offense meant to anyone. All right, I believe you. The kind of man who uses the crime to lie to an officer. Okay, okay, I admit it. I threw the mug away in the trash container behind the hostel. I know I shouldn't have, and I'm very sorry, officer. He pauses. You're not going to find me, are you? Dang. But no, I'm just going to... I just want information. Whew, he's visibly leaving. Thank you, you won't regret it. I won't ever use another man's property to dump my garbage ever again. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn, uh, Kojiko is price dumping us out of competition. Uh, Morel, the cryptozoologist. What did you do, Gary? Nothing, nothing. As answering the questions, how about the law? How did you get into the trash container? I know a guy who works for the trash collection services, CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. Why would you need to get into everyone's trash? So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff, he says, bowing shamefully like a fallen knight. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Hemians run it like a mob. I'm sorry, okay? I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I should have disgraced myself. Disgraced? Lieutenant raises his eyebrow looks up. No need for this histronic, sir. It was, after all, just a trash container. He studies his reaction. Gary doesn't answer. Gary, did you put the clothes of a murder victim, the man who was hanged behind the whirling and rags, into that trash container? Officer, please. He raises both hands. Let me explain. It's not like that. Yeah, do. I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged. I saw him stripped naked. All the clothes lying around the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know. Um, yes, yes. What happened? Then I came out to clean up the rags because no one else would. I put them into the whirling's trash, along with a broken mug, admittedly. He changes his mind mid-sentence. Okay, I was coming to throw my, the mug away. Well, I threw the mug there and the clothes, too. Right, it was just civic duty, Lieutenant Marks drolly. Exactly, that's exactly what it was. Civic duty. As he shifts uncomfortably, a series of clicks, like the clinking of glass beads against one another as they roll across a hardwood floor. You've heard that sound before, but where? What's that strange sound? What sound? Don't mess with me. I think you know what I'm talking about. 
I'm um, the slightest. There's lots of weird stuff out here in the reeds, though. Insects, trash, could be the wind sh uh, sh shifting some garbage nearby. You wouldn't know anything about the victim's missing armor, would you? Armor? No. He changed my I mean, yes, of course, I know he's wearing armor, but I don't know anything about it. An infant could see he's not telling the truth, but he's too scared to admit more wrongdoing. Let's move on for now. Um... Composure, why is he shifting around like that? Are you a cryptozoologist too? No, I help around with research sometimes and I've learned some things on the way, but I don't usually go in for picnics like this on my own. You were surprised to see my colleague, Kitsuragi. Not many Seolites here or anywhere other than Seol. I meant no offense, truly. Do you remember how when we met Measurehead, I said the next racist would be the really good one? Yes. Well, he gestures towards Gary as though he were presenting a work of art. This is that racist. <laughs> yes, our lucky racist. Hey, man, he blushes. All I meant was there are not many sail lights around here. I'm just stating a fact. Uh, Lieutenant is a native of Revachal. Oh, yes, of course he is. Um, I was just speaking about his connections. He flashes an impenetrable smile. Let's change the subject, okay? Well, do you know anything about the man hanged behind the whirling in rags? I told you everything I know, sir. I'm truly sorry for the mug, but I have nothing to do with that. He shifts uncomfortably in his clothes. All right, thanks for your cooperation. I really need some extra legendary for this. Current, or not actually, actually, extra, extra composure. My current composure has nothing at all. Um... According to this. Actually, what is composure anyway? It's, um... Yellow? Yeah, it's yellow. I have zero points in it. Uh, I could put one in if I need to, but... Let's check if I can up it at all. Alright, I don't think so. That's all. That one is all I'm going to get. So let's try this. Always a pleasure to see an officer of the law. Oh, isn't it just? I mean, officers. All right. Why is he shifting around like that? Ooh, I thought that was going to fail. That sure looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons, barely keeping that thing together, as if something is ready to rip out from underneath. Something worn underneath it, like perhaps some armor? Yes, yeah, like a piece of ceramic armor, for example. One that makes a clicking sound when the plates meet each other, resembling pearls or marbles, stolen from the corpse in a yard near where he lives. I see you're a connoisseur of high-quality combat gear. He freezes and sighs heavily. I, I knew you'd figure it out, officer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once. I was. He unbuttons the shirt. You see a gleaming white ceramic shine underneath, a thin layer of interlocking plates. Uh, covers his gaunt torso. I was ashamed of what I did. I didn't want you to know. We're not detecting falsehood, sire. He's gearing up to admit the truth. This shame is surprisingly sincere. Gary, what's going on? Later, Morel. I got apologizing to do. No, you've got explaining to do. Lieutenant's tone is icy. Give me that armor now. He sighs again, hangs his head, and unbuttons his shirt fully. Curious that matches the dead man's boots comes into view. Soon it's in your hands, smelling of his sweat. But so, so light to hold, like a bag of cotton. Why did you really put those clothes in the trash? Evan was picking those pieces off when I was watching him do it. And they scattered his clothes all over the yard. Everything was smelling, looks at his feet. So I went in there to take out my trash and started cleaning up. All those rags on the ground. Him swinging up there and he swallows. I had a lapse of honor, sir. I thought he's a foreigner. They'll all say, they all say he wasn't from here. Only the curious was left, so I stripped it off him. It was early in the morning. No one saw me. I took it with me. It was a mistake. Had I known I'd give you guys trouble, I wouldn't have... His lips started quivering. Fuck. It's okay. Lieutenant jots, jots something down his notebook. It was a loose end, and you're tying it up now. I'm so fucking sorry I call you yellow man, he says silently. Sailor officers commanded the Surizian's navy. Most of them sided with the king when he shakes his head. They were thoroughly conservative men, he realizes suddenly. It's difficult to say what the lieutenant thinks of this historic apology. His face does not belie emotions. Why'd you lie to me, Gary? Because I was weak, he says, staring at nothing in particular. I should have told you the moment I saw you, but... The hell, Gary? Are you in trouble? I'll explain later. He doesn't muster up the strength to yell. Do you know who killed the hanged man? 
I always thought it was the union. Some union hard asses lynched him because of the strike. But I almost everyone in the town knows that. I wish I could tell you more. He shakes his head. This is all he knows. Are we done here, Gary? Oh, we're done here. Yes, absolutely. I will never do anything like this again. He looks around, relieved of some burden, his mouth still quivering. Thank you for your cooperation. All right. So, hooray. We have uh, solved one task. We have. Let's check out this armor. Plus one to f f uh, pain threshold and plus one to volition. But a sad minus to empathy. I do need to get my clothes back better. I think I do want to hang on to the perception when I'm just kind of wandering around. Um, oh, I had a shirt for conceptualization. Why didn't I just missed it? Oh, no, it was composure, not conceptualization I was looking for. Uh, I'll put that back on. I still like my shivers and a spirit decor. Um, if I want a lot of conceptualization, I really can bump it up. Add some reaction speed at the cost of some rhetoric. I don't know. I don't know what glasses I like best. But that's good. That's good. Items. Got uh, a new postcard. And then here we got a new point to spend. I'm going to hang on to it. Some thoughts. Why does art inspire you so much? It does, yes, but what is art? Excellent question. Art is a diverse range of visual, literary, auditory, and performative creativity. It's an expression of imagination and technical skill. Additionally, it's history, criticism, and pure enjoyment. In short, art is the highest form of human communication, representation, narrative, emotion, and agency intertwined. Well, what I fit in the art world? Have you looked in the mirror lately? You have the exact features of a savage art critic, which that beard and those clothes, disheveled and prophetic. Perhaps you should try to critique architecture too. I guess I have been feeling critical lately. Yes, you seek substance. No vapid representation and reproductions of social mores as made manifest in stuffy biennials. We're talking real living art here. Become the art cop. Half art critic, half cop. Wait, hold it. Don't have to be 100% cop? Do you the case finished and all that? Quit being indecisive. What are you going for here? Some kind of indecisive and camp aesthetic now? Strike a bold shape here. Go art or go home. Well, that 50% art critic is what's needed to free me from repetition, so be it. Actual art degree. Exactly. It's not only your duty to, on to only catch the criminals of the street. You must also apprehend the criminals of the printing heiress in the gallery. The trite and derivative artists and writers of the world. Go ahead and provide savage criticisms, art cop. The world is yours to rip to pieces and reassemble. Go me. All right. Morale, we've been looking for you, man. Here we go. Nice and easy. No way out, little guys. Not out of this jam. There's a cylinder on the ground at which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices Who's you. there? Oh, the police. Hello, officer. You must be Morel, the cryptozoologist. To what do I owe the pleasure? That's sarcasm. He takes no pleasure from your appearance. You don't seem too happy to see the RCM. Oh, no, it's all right. I'm just busy. What's this about? He glanced at the cylinder. Lena sent me. She's been really worried about you and is waiting for you to get back. Ah, of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn waterlock is broken, and we can't go all the way around the 881. Um. I can say, yeah, that was me. I broke the waterlock with the motor carriage. It's fixed now. You can go back. Or the waterlock's been fixed. It was fine when I crossed it. It's with whole Oh, good. Story. We should really be getting back. Gaddy could use a hot shower and a warm bed. Yeah, he could. Jeez. Did he say we can go back now? Yes. Yes, Gaddy. We can go soon. If you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. Thanks, Morel. We'll do that. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. I just have to do one more round. See if the Phasmid has taken the bait. Then we're going. Here he fastens a bit of netting that has come loose in the wind. His hands are large and weather-worn, but also used to delicate, precise work. For all his passion, the man is diligent and patient. You can learn things from him. I'm looking for a suspect. Have you seen a woman with red hair who seemed to be on the run? I'm afraid not, officer. I've been busy digging around in the reeds for days, looking for signs of insect activity. I'm less interested in mammalian concerns, to be perfectly honest. Lieutenant did a short note in his notebook and gestures for you to proceed. Tell me about this phasma you're looking for. Hmm, well, first of all, it's damn difficult to find, which is why we've been knee-deep in the reeds laying traps for it. What makes it difficult to find? Good question. Being a phasmid, the order of fan of the order Phantasmodea, a ghost insect. It disguises itself as plant matter. In this case, the reeds. 
He looks around. Awful lot of reeds around, aren't there? And I suspect it may also have developed other specialized techniques to protect itself from predators or scientists in our present case. What sort of specialized techniques is the phasmid using to hide itself? It's my hypothesis. It's evolved certain electrochemical defenses that allow it to interfere with animal perception, impeding pattern recognition, confusing the visual cortex. But I cannot describe how these defenses work, much less how they evolved without studying a live specimen. Yes, it makes perfect sense. You're beginning to suspect of something paranatural about this phasmid. How big is this phasmid? I'm expecting it to be quite giant. One knows species of phasmid called the Meg Omega Phasmodia zoensis. It's about the size of a grown man's forearm, so leaves the conclusion up to you. Why are you so interested in this stick bug? It doesn't seem to be as colorful as some of the other cryptids I've heard about. He flashes you a sideways smile. Typical rookie assumption. Insects are much more sophisticated creatures than those unversed in zoology give them credit for. Even simply catching a glimpse of the Insulidian phasmid would be the apex of my, of any, cryptozoologist's career. But to study it and its defenses, find out how it stayed hidden so long, he shakes his head. What have you discovered so far? Very little, I'm sorry to say. No one's ever captured a specimen, so all our information is based on first and third hand accounts. So no one's ever found one. Not yet. He holds up an index finger. That's what makes it a cryptid. <clears throat> then interjects, out of curiosity, if there's no proof of existence, how do you know it's real? I know it's real. The cryptozoologist says, briskly enough, that even he seems taken aback by it. It's clear that his obsession with the phasmin is driven by something more than the pure pursuit of scientific advancement. By which I mean, he says, gathering himself, I've heard enough first-hand accounts to believe quite firmly uh, that the Insulidian phasmin is more than mere superstition. Maybe the Insulidian phasmin has died out? The cryptologist shakes his head vigorously. I have to resist the thought. Such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient. After all, it's generally thought to be capable of parthogenesis. Uh, he means asexual reproduction. The females of the species don't need to mate to produce viable eggs. This makes it easier for a species with a small population to survive. That's pretty clever. Yes, the insulidium phasmid is a very clever insect. That's why it's so damn difficult to catch. But as a scientist, I try my best to remain dispassionate. Passionate. Tell me more about these traps. Well... He pointed the cage of mesh and wiring on the ground. They may not look impressive, but Lena designed them quite cleverly, so I'm sure they'll do the trick. She, Lena designed the traps. Yes, he says with some pride. How do they work? Simple. A trap with a locust, the fan phasmid crawls in the funnel, and having eaten its fill, can't get back out. At least that's the intention. The net isn't a perfect solution, but we didn't want to use anything that might damage the specimen's delicate exoskeleton. What are you using as bait? Locust. He gestures towards the trap. Nearly all known phasmids are herbivores, of course. We've hypothesized the insulidian phasmid might occasionally prey on other insects. Inside the traps, a number of locusts crawl and tumble over one another in a tiny chittering swarm. A meat-eating stick insect that pretend to be the reeds as part of its ambush behavior it seems unlikely. A carnivorous stick insect, it seems unlikely. Thank you for your opinion. We have also included plant material in the traps to satiate your skepticism. What do you do if the traps don't work? They'll work, I assure you. The predatory hypothesis, losing locusts as bait, accounts for the failure of previous efforts by other teams, which use plants. We have given this some thought. The traps do seem to be deftly and thoughtfully constructed. It's clear the cryptozoologist's wife knows what she's doing. Let me ask you about something else. Yes, what? Uh, how did you become a cryptozoologist? I've just always liked animals and puzzles. Searching for a cryptid is a bit of both. So you're living your childhood dream out here. His eyes narrow. It's not child's play just because I have to traipse through the mud so every so often. So why not just be a zoologist? Real animals are puzzling too. Real? He scoffs at the concept. I know you think one is a respectable profession while the other is superstition. Everyone does. I don't. It's a profession that's like any other. Indeed. My methods do not differ from other scientists. I simply draw upon a wider variety of evidence and have more hope that something truly surprising might happen. And has anything truly surprising ever happened to you? I have yet to catch a cryptid, if that's what you're getting at, but I have come close. 
Hmm, interesting. Tell me for later. It's a close call. What kinds of evidence, evidence do you use? Everything from forgotten regional lore to newspaper accounts like the one that brought us here to look for the phasmid. I keep a very open mind. He's interested in things that people, that people believe that scientists don't. You think other scientists don't listen to ordinary people enough? Most establishment scientists only care about reputation and remuneration, not real research, and certainly not the truth. There are cowardly lot, and both the field and basement ar archives can be dangerous places. So, you have never discovered a cryptid? No, very few cryptids are ever discovered, and not for a lack of trying. To stay hidden is a cryptid's primary quality. It's even in the name cryptid. So how many cryptids have you found? Haven't found. Of the list of cryptids kept by the Cryptozoological Society of Chemni, which is 4,082 items long, about 2,000 have been confirmed as hoaxes. Not what I asked. Two are categorized as confirmed discoveries. The rest are in differing stages of discovery, refutation, and data collection. Only two have proven to be real. Yes, the uh, Shao Taquan uh, forest pigby, who turned out to be an extinct species of primate, and a cave salamander from Yugo Grad, who is, honestly, quite unremarkable. It is in a zoo somewhere. We cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves, more so even than the public. Most cryptids are hoaxes, or they have never been found. Uh, that does not mean we should stop searching. Then the Insulidian Phasmin will be the third. See, this is my charming way with people. Indeed. He does not smile, just looks you in the eyes. It's a forceful gaze. If our expedition is successful, every paper in the world report on it. From Revachal to Daoshanto, it will be a zoological miracle. He has clearly done his math on this, no surprising him or swaying his opinion. Thanks for explaining that. Now about something else? Um, did you know... You know Gary was hiding the armor. Hell no, I had no idea. And I'm still cross with him, to be honest. It's not like him. He's got his quirks, but dishonesty or disloyalty are not one of them. Thanks, the man mutters in the distance. He doesn't dare say more. He's still glad his friend, st friend stood up for him. Lena seems pretty eager for you to return. And I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't believe before we've finished with these traps. He looks south, where Lena would be. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. Come on, Morel, we've been soaking out here for days. Time to go back. And leave the traps? Absolutely not, he yells in response. I won't let Lena down. Come on, she wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. Won't let Lena down? Sounds like uh, the cryptozoologist's wife has a special connection to the phasmid somehow. I didn't know the phasmid was so important to Lena. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting on record. One of only four this century, and it's hers. She's seen it. Really, she sighted the phasmid. She didn't tell me that. Yes, that's how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell, not mine. He coughs and continues. He has to say you must ask her about the mysterious fa uh, phasmoid. Oh, phasmodoid. I've been saying that wrong. Anyway, suffice to say, it's been our dream to find proof of the insulidium phasmid together. I can't abandon this course now. Their cough in his fist this time. Maybe you could go back to the whirling, warm up, come back to the traps later? No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. What we do with the phasmid were to starve while we were sipping tea at the hostel. He's dead set on this. Hmm. I go for some trap setting. No, I am not checking the traps for you guys. Let's get going. Maybe I'll change my mind about that later. But as of right now, like, no way. Uh-uh. Okay, and I can't get up here this way. So I'm really bothered about how I can get inside... Um, up here? I can get up there, sorry. On, like, the back side of it or whatever. And also, this building? Have we, have we seen this building? Where are we on the map? Um. So, okay, we're, like, in this... This is the boardwalk. 
We're like down th this thing here, I guess. Um, it is almost midnight. Can I even get? Oh, hold it. What am I? What's the thought? The water runs from the rest. The source is upstream. A broken pipe, perchance. I can't get up there at all. Huh. I mean, it's almost midnight. I suspect that Kim is going to want to go sleep soon. That's a Noland Vinct Sink, an unsuccessful model. Okay. Okay, so I guess we got to cross here. Um, this is this is the shack we went in earlier. This door is closed for the day. Time to put the kids to sleep. She's still out here in the rain. I think it's time to call it a day. The door has seen better days. A layer of paint has started to peel off due to the salt and wind from the sea. Even the lock looks slight, slightly rusted. Unlock it with the key. It's getting late. I'll let you sweep this place on your own. I'm sure you can handle the washerwoman. I'll be sleeping in my room whirling. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. All right, I'll sleep here then. See you in the morning. Keep turning the key. Good night, he smiles. And try not to break the case without me. Enter the shack. All right, here is the shack. Let's just see what's going on here. Another mirror. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see the reflection of your face in it, adorned with the expression. Okay, let it be. A window. You see the waves, the sea, a church, which we want to go check out here sooner than uh, later. Old science fiction magazines, books about bird watching, an almanac from 39. Thought. This intricate heat engine hums quietly, giving out pleasant warmth. The floorboard creaks under my step. As you look in the floorboards, this corner of the shack is clear one of them isn't quite level with the others. The edge of the floorboard look, next to it looks scratched, so move it aside. The hollow space underneath the floorboards is dark and damp. You can barely make out the mixture of sand and sawdust below. What's in here? Nothing particular catches your eye. It looks like more reeds. Might be something hidden inside the sand, though. Something bad. Someone's night thoughts. A last resort. A bad idea. Search the sand and sawdust. You stick your hand and start combing through the sand. Dry, not like outside. Find dust and then something hard wrapped in paper. What is it? A small cylindrical object. You pull it out. A bullet. A nine millimeter bullet to be exact. Fit for all muddle, muzzle loaders of that caliber. This bullet isn't for a breech loader like the uh, murder weapon. The floorboard isn't interested. Maybe the washerwoman is. You have enough to confront her with. It's extra ammunition. She's locked and loaded, ready to fight some cops. I'm a little confused about what just happened there. So, um, I... Bullet... I thought I had... Okay. We want to interact with this. Um, it's not going to help me that way. Okay. Have I ever interacted with this? The... Um, the crumbling petals. Somewhere in Subtle Jamrock, Lieutenant Kitsuragi steps into the public library. Rows of shelves pass on either side. You feel he should be here for in-depth flower analysis. That was it? Huh. Okay. Anyway, I guess I have... It says bullets? Uh, is that in the items, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, this is weird. Maybe if I don't have a, a gun, I can't do anything with bullets either. Um, a wash ba basin. On the table, you see a bowl of water, a rough soap, and next to it, a small hand mirror. A straight razor soaks inside the wash basin. Is shaving the right call? The water reflects back a vague image of your face. Nose bulbous and red, hair unkempt, wrinkles lining the eyes and forehead. The stash is gigantic. I mean, let's just... I can't really see the picture very well. I mean... Do we just see it looking in the mirror? I don't. I'm kind of thinking, like... Currently, my chops and stash are the only things that are, like, hiding my pasty 
liver pocked face from the world. Why would I shave it off? That would like be even worse. So I think I'm going to leave it for now, but that is uh, all the time I have for today. So thanks so much for watching. We'll come back and sleep tomorrow. I'll see you soon.